side, kid. Hey guys, what's up? So we are at the Oceanside Pier, and I want to introduce you to a pretty crazy cat, man. His name is Mouse, he's a good dude, super smart. He's uh, kind of OG Oceanside, and he's gonna give us sort of what is going on in Oceanside through his point of view. Uh, the city's changed a lot in the last 20 years. Um, there's a lot more tourism, it's cleaned up, and this guy's pretty random. So we're gonna chat with him real quick, see what he's got to say. Uh, we got a nice sunset behind us, Hope you guys enjoy it. Talk to you later. All right, Mal. So you're kind of original Oceanside. I want to hear your thoughts about how you think this city's changed in the last 10, 15 years. Well, the one thing is definitely changed a lot. I mean, you look at this out here right now, you got families, you got, you know, people out here, couples, all this nice tourists, all this stuff out here right now, right? Back in the day, you would not want to have been on this strand after dark. Back in the day, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have come out here after the sun went down. You know, this place used to be gnarly. It used to be really fucking just kind of a cutthroat sort of a little little town, and that was sort of the mystique of it all. That was sort of, you know, you had, you had little gangs of punk rock kids, you know, some of which I was a part of. You have gangsters running around here, everybody doing dirt, doing business. Drunk Marines, Drunk hookers, Marines fighting, you have hookers tweakers. on the coast highway. You know, about the same amount of tweakers as there are now. It's funny that I don't know what the city is putting in the water, but they're keeping a little more quiet than usual nowadays. But out here was it was a lot different. It was the kind of place where you had to watch your back. It was the kind of place where if you went into one of the neighborhoods you better have a knife on you. You know, where you from, man? Where you from, kid? Um, yeah, exactly. Every time you hit this a ain't block. This bad. Every time you hit a block. Where you from, white boy? What you doing in this neighborhood, man? What you got on you? What is that? And it's, that's, that was a name. How, how is the valley nowadays? Is that still kind of how it used to be, or is it? The valley's getting nicer from what I hear. I was just talking to somebody the other day. It's getting a little nicer, but it's still the valley. It's always going to be the valley. Yeah, and it's the same thing with Oceanside. Same thing with out here. It's always going to be Oceanside. They can pretty it up. They can put as many hotels and motels and fuck up our beautiful ocean view as much as they want to but it's always going to be grimy it's always going to be gutter it's always going to be ghetto and that's the thing about oceanside you know and it used to be to where on a weekend you'd uh you know you'd go go get together with your friends go out to a show somewhere five bucks maybe maximum cover charge maybe you were playing paying seven bucks Ten bucks if it was a big bank. Sometimes real fucking punk rock bands would come through. Fucking come through the metaphor in, in Escondido. You just get kids, ten dollars in the door, boom, 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 boom. It's just rage. It's fucking just a beautiful thing. And out here now, I mean, I'd say honestly, like culture is dead in Southern California. You know, nobody wants to create a new scene, nobody wants to do anything creative or crazy. It's all sort of watered down. This used to be the place where the craziest, most hardcore parts of, of, of culture and counterculture and underground lifestyle used to come out of. And now it's sort of like the bottom of the drain where everything is just watered down and fucking thinned out. And it really fucking sucks. It's diluted. It's diluted completely, exactly. Um, and you know, it's just, it's crazy to me to look at because as little as 10, 15 years ago when I was a kid running around out here, um, it was a whole nother world. And I'm, you know, it's, it's kind of, you know, I, for me, I feel like I, I feel my age sometimes with the young people out here. You know, I, I, they talk about shit that I don't fucking get. And, you know, the music I don't fucking get. And it's weird. Because when I was, when I was a kid running around out here, it's cutthroat. It was hardcore. It was gnarly. It was survival. A lot of people don't understand that. People that come from, you know, just over the line, just up Orange County, right fucking there. 
they they live a life of privilege and come down here and they don't get it. You know, they can listen to as much gangster. They rap stare at you weirdos from their rolled up windows with their doors locked. <laughs> they can listen to as much gangster rap as they want, but they'll never understand what true thug life, true gutter, fucking ghetto life is about. And it's funny to me because it's like. You know, I mean, Oceanside's on TV now. You know, it's fucking Animal Kingdom. Fucking, they had a fucking chase scene right on the strand. And so people are seeing that shit, and they're coming down here thinking that, oh, yeah, hey, you ain't nobody. You're a rich white boy from Orange County. Get the fuck out of my town. I'll take all your drugs and kick you in the face. So I want to ask you, uh, you know, I've been gone for a while now. And one of the things that I've noticed, even like as, I guess as an outsider basically at this point, due to the homelessness here in Southern California, California in general, like what are your thoughts on that? Like, it's, it's gnarly, man. I mean, I, you know, I have been and am currently temporarily a victim of, of homelessness at the moment. And especially out here, you know, it used to be there was like, you know, your, your local little street kids that ran around, a couple of home bums that were sort of uh, fixtures. Uh, you know what I mean? Until somebody died of liver failure or whatever. And, um, you know, that was kind of it. And now there's just this revolving mass of people. What do you attribute that to? I mean, could it be, like, I know the cost of living out here is really crazy. Um, is that a part of it? Is it more? Is That's it... a huge part of it. For me, it's the three major factors are cost of living, uh, mental illness, and everything that kind of goes with that uh, treatment and, you know, way that people are treated, the resources that they have uh, made available to them, um, and then uh, dr addiction. Drug addiction is huge, because I, I don't think that substance abuse is being, um, substance abuse and mental illness go hand in hand. Substance abuse is a mental illness, um, you know, a, addiction disorder. Um, and, uh, you know, those, those things are not being handled, I don't think, by the powers that be in a way that is beneficial to the, to the common man. So people are losing their homes over things that they can't necessarily control, um, or it gets to the point where maybe they have an addiction, nobody really notices it, and they blow all their money, they can't afford rent. Rent goes up in the neighborhood because fucking they built some fancy hotel down the street. And uh, you know, some vicious cycle repeats. Yeah, it just boom, 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 and it will, it's just nonstop. Then you get, then the problem is, you know, you, you'll get somebody who never had a criminal record in their fucking life, they haven't even got a parking ticket. They lose their home, they end up on the street. You know, maybe they fucking become an alcoholic. Boom, they get an open container ticket. That ticket goes, they obviously, they don't go to court. Fuck, you know what I mean? They don't go to court. That ticket goes to a benchmark. Boom, they're locked up. That then begins a whole other vicious cycle within the vicious cycle of poverty and homelessness. And it's just this whole huge thing, and it's not something that's being addressed. I don't think that most people, especially anybody that's moving here, really gets it. And um, I, I just, I, it's it's heartbreaking, honestly, to, to see. I mean, I'll see people that obviously aren't from out here, and they see like the local bums, and. Like, there's no understanding and no compassion. Like, you can see in their face, their whole thought process is you got yourself here. When in honestly, like, 80 to 90% of the cases with homelessness, that's not the case. How do we fix it? Where do we start even? I mean... Well, you know, the big thing in this country is money. Money is what makes things happen. Redirect what the fuck they're doing with the money. Government has to redirect what they're doing with the money. Take it out of fucking the military industrial complex, going to countries we don't need to be in in order to grab resources that we already have, um, likely in abundance, and um, you know, stop um, stop destroying other cultures and calling it a holy war. I appreciate you opening up about that, man. I know it's it just it's, it's crazy to me, man, because like we're such a wealthy country. I just it blows my mind, man, that there's not more that's being done. I mean, I don't know where to start, you know. It's yeah, it's surely somebody does though. You know, to me, at this point in in this in this country. Um, the only thing that's going to fix anything is a complete political overhaul, ideological overhaul. Um, 
America has to redefine what it's about because what it's been claiming that it's about for all this time is no longer working. You know, and we feel it the, the hardest down here in a town where you have, they're building resorts, you've got hotel in this corner, hotel in this corner, brand new apartments, brand new apartments, you know, all that stuff. And then you go a couple blocks up and a little over past the high school, and it's the barrio. A lot of it kind of looks nice, but there's a lot of it where it's a lot of much poorer people are living. Right smack to the back of, you know, incredibly expensive resort homes. Condo. And, um, you know, it's... It, it really kind of shows you that your city doesn't give a fuck about it. Uh, when all their money is going to this shit. And, uh, and, uh, That's another kind of a vicious cycle that sort of snowballs, you know what I mean? Like you get one of these high rises, here comes another one, and then it... <coughs> that It kind of goes the other direction almost, you know what I mean? Like yeah. we're, we're seeing that where I live in, in Raleigh. It's uh, The building boom is on, man, and it's pushing out a lot of really cool old stuff that had character and charm. They're replacing it with generic shit that's way overpriced that nobody can afford. Um, I mean, it, I'm sure those aren't the only two cities that's happening in. You know what I mean? Oh, definitely. Like, it's, I mean, every major it's every, city, it's everywhere. Every, every place that gets big enough. That's the problem with Oceanside. Is we kind of got put ourselves on the map sort of unintentionally. And, uh, I know. blame Top Gun, man. It all started with Top Gun. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Tom Cruise, you motherfucker, we're coming for you. <laughs> you're, you're the reason why we get all these tourists every summer. You for, the, summer. for those that don't know, the Top Gun house uh, with the dinner scene was filmed in Oceanside right down the street from where we're at. So it's kind of our, it was our claim to fame. This, um, low riders, surfers, and punk rock, and the Top Gun house. That was about it. And pretty Alberta's. Much, yeah. Angelo's. That's pretty much it. Um, How's the music scene around here, man? I mean, are there still... Uh, how is Soma doing? I know that's in San Diego, but yeah, is that so, still there? I mean, Soma, yeah, Soma's, Soma's still around. I don't think it's the original uh, building or location or whatever. It's still around. But, um, yeah, you know, music out here is different now. Everything is um, going to either more experimental stuff or, like, really friend, you know, I, Kind of like I say, like coffee house, hipster, acoustic like shit. Basically, like Warp Tour sucks since about 2005. Well, yeah, all... thank you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, Warp Tour hasn't been good for a very long time. Um, you know, we went to the first one here, man. It was Dick Dale played. Siv was there. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I think Sublime was there. It wasn't a lot of bands. It was at um, it was the Sports Arena, maybe I forget, dude. But yeah, man. Okay, Dick Dale, though, man. That's crazy. That motherfucker. Play some goddamn guitar. Um, but like, yeah, for me, man, like, especially I'm, I'm a punk rocker. Our scene has fucking like disappeared out here, and it's sad. You know, I I, I, I got out of prison a few years back, five years ago, um, and uh, the first thing I, I fucking got, my buddy was like, dude, there's a punk show in Vista. I'm go, and it was next to the record store, Standards downtown Vista. And they had a spot there that was, it was sort of like a hip-hop culture fucking t-shirts and you can buy a can of spray paint kind of a place. And it was really cool. And so they fucking would put on shows for standards. The dudes from standards would put nice. it together. But that was the treat for me. But the funny thing was I was getting called a hipster and an old man and all this shit. And I was like, oh, these little motherfuckers. And I was, you know, I was like, I still had some fire in me. I still felt young. And then just at the Misfits show a couple weeks ago, I'm standing in the back with all the old timers. I went in the pit once and more. <sighs> you know, you sorry. There's one thing that'll make you feel your age is going to a punk show after not going for a while. But you know, you know, the scene's not totally dead out here. We have a lot of uh, underground houses where we do punk shows. We had Creep 13 Punk House in Escondido. My boy Adrian helped run that. Um, that was really kind of a a much needed haven. For kids like us, um, they gotta have somewhere to go, man. Yeah, you know, it was, you know, it's. I, I, if I, you know, get back and, you know, get my shit together, essentially, uh, I'm hoping to kind of do a similar thing. Get a bunch of kids, get a house together, walk in, throw shows, um, you know, 
maybe put a half fucking pipe in the backyard. <laughs> Tell me uh, a little bit more about Norway, man. Oh man, that's gonna be like politically or just <laughs> me wanting to go there. <laughs> Whatever you feel like saying, man. I mean, it's it's a place that is sort of just happened to catch my my attention. I, I had someone that I met while I was traveling. I first started traveling, and you know, she's from Norway, and like I sort of, because we became friends on Facebook, I would get all these news articles that she would post and like different stuff, and it's such a fascinating, fascinating fucking country. And like the, the social political fucking climate there is very interesting because they're very, it's sort of like, this is the way it is, this is what works, this is what we're doing. Everything else, all this other bullshit, hateful right-wing ideology, fuck off. And they they have a pretty well-working socialist system that I think is fucking something that America should aspire to. Um, you know, they have some interesting laws. I can't remember if it was Norway or Sweden, but there's one of these countries where, like, you pretty much are required to own a gun. Guess what? There's no gun crime. But at the same time, it's like, you know, stuff for, like, religious freedom and stuff that kind of is being sort of squashed out here, I think, is more open. It's interesting. So they, they sort of found a happy medium, I think, politically. Um, but it's it's a fascinating culture, and music is amazing. Oh my god. Some of the most insane fucking bands come out of there. Cause it's like, like Norwegian death black yeah, metal kind of like... Black like, metal, but well, you get like weirder stuff nowadays. You know, I mean, you have that vein, and it sort of like got into like electronic music and stuff and you hear those influences in different kinds of music and you're like whoa and there's like freaking like viking folk music and stuff and just this crazy crazy shit that just you know it, it's not a sound that you're used to and it's really fun but yeah that's yeah, that's it's definitely on my list man that's I'd love my goal to go. man as soon as i'm as soon as i'm off people it's get that flight dude i wish you the best of luck man that's gonna be cool yeah you're gonna go for what, like two or three months? You said at least. That's awesome, that's man. Kind of, that's kind of the plan. So we we'll be there for a little while, and then. See, that's my thing as well. Either hit more of Europe or come back here. When when I travel, it's usually only like maybe two weeks at the most, and you know that's not enough time to really like get in sync with the yeah, daily yeah. life, man. So like, if you can go somewhere, dude, for like a month or two or three or a year, yeah, like that's what I'm saying. That man. you really get to figure it out and like you get like absorbed in it man like yeah. you learn some of the language and like you get friends and like you know know which food sucks and right which, exactly which... and that's for me that's sort of a really essential part to traveling you know, and you know not really having been to other countries it's kind of it, there's this this thing for me of like you know i'm used to just kind of being in american culture so everywhere is more or less the same you can get acclimated like that you know where everything is. You remember the street games because they're all either dead presidents or fucking trees. Or states. Yeah, or states. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know? So. <laughs> fucking, um. Yeah, dude, every time you put yourself outside your comfort zone, man, yeah, you grow. I mean, man, you know that. I, I know. Oh, yeah, I can't wait to, to travel the world, you know. Take you never know, too, like, who, what kind of contacts Asia. you make once you get there. And they're like, hey, dude, I live in Thailand. Come hang out for a few months. Right. Like, you know. That's, to me, like that. And what sucks is, like, traveling, you know, I've never had the opportunity to leave the country. But I've met so many people, like, look, dude, I'm out here. Like, I've got this. Like, anytime, it's like, I don't have the ability to do that. Like, you know what I mean? Me being, you know, in a brother, soon. enough, yeah. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's just, I, I love, for me too, like being a cook, like food, that's, that's gonna just be like the, you know, the kicker for me, traveling. Just getting into, up, like, culture's food and, like, that is something that just, you know, makes me so happy to just think about the picture. I want, you know what I mean, like different things, you know, because they have different ingredients. Something more than like corn dogs and hot yeah, and french right. fries. It's just, yeah, it's not, you know, <laughs> just like, oh, here's some corned beef and like mashed potatoes. No, it's like, this is like a fish that you can only get over here that has this fucking specific flavor. And then we made this broth that we cook for fucking three fucking days. Yeah, like shark fin broth you know and what like I mean? smoked and, whatever. And you're just fish. like, oh my God. And it's my favorite thing in the world is when there is something that, you know, culture is looked at as a very like poor dish, very like, you know, working class, right? And then you taste it and you're like, 
like, oh my god. You know, it's something that completely blows your mind that you've never had before. It's completely foreign to you. Them, it's peanut butter and jelly. You know, <laughs> it's a very common thing. You catch up on everything. <laughs> catch up is a gun that's consummate. Dude, I can't believe how many fucking people are on the pier right now, dude. Like, really? I I, told, I was I think I was telling you before. Yeah, it was, it was Monday night. Dude, there's a thousand people on the pier right now. Maybe not that many, but like, yeah, hold, no. are they giving away money or something? No. Like, just tourists. It's crazy. It's yeah, mind blowing, it's tourists, dude. It's, it's mind blowing. Oh my god, look, they've got their rupees. Let's go to the rupees at the end of the pier. Come on, child, let's go. I'm freaking, you know what I mean? It's like. That's the long, did you know it's the longest wooden pier in Southern California? Longer than if you laid the Empire State Building <laughs> on its side. You heard that one? Oh God, dude. My <laughs> uh, town is a tourist trap, help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. You know, I'm surprised it took this long, though, dude, honestly. I, for me, man, I didn't think it would ever happen. Especially, like, when I was between 16 and 20, I kind of, it kind of looked like Oceanside was gonna be the Oceanside we all know and love for days to come and the, never to end. The boom ended at Carlsbad, you yeah. know, just like, and so then every, the everything way, north of Carlsbad yeah. is just a wasteland. That's the so. way that it looked, and then in the past, like, I'd say maybe seven years, they've been trying to nice it up which is funny to me um dude and there's gonna be so much more coming yeah that's the i'm, I'm trying to get the fuck out of here before that um but like it's it's crazy to me because i remember man i remember being 19 20 years old and fucking roll into town get off the greyhound or fucking roll in from the train station or whatever and you know get off at the transit center and there's the wall right there across from the bathrooms and there'd be somebody crouched on the end of it, like no one can see them going. <laughs> smoking meth. And then you'd fucking you'd look and there'd be like, you know, some fucking wing nut sitting on one of the benches, <laughs> wigging out. And like, you know, now yeah. I barely see that. Barely, barely. It's still there, but it's barely there. Now you'd always see people just like twacked out, yeah. walking down Hill Street or whatever. And by the way, for those of you that call it Coast Highway, it is Hill Street. <laughs> Um, forever. I barely remember it being Hill Street. <laughs> but, um, yeah, man, like, I, it's, it's crazy for me, because, like I said, it seemed like it was always going to be the same, because they were still the same drug dealers, the same gangbangers, uh, you know, the same kind of cast of characters, or, you know, same characters, different players, kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and it sort of seemed like that was just the way it was going to be, and then, when I started being here less and traveling more and sort of these things seeing myself from Oceanside and from California, they sort of took a great big broom and sort of seems like cleaned the city up, which I don't think is beneficial to anyone that matters. Um, it's beneficial to tourists with a lot of fucking excess uh, money in their fucking pockets. So, you know, I don't think it, it's gonna do anybody any good. You guys get hassled a bunch down here by the cops, you know, all these tourist areas now. It honestly isn't as bad as it used to be, which is funny to me. Uh, and it kind of seems when, when, Ocean, when Oceanside was a little more uh, cutthroat, the cops really didn't give a fuck. Um, you know, unless you looked like you had your fingers in some, you know, pretty big pots, um, they wouldn't really fuck with you. That I got fucked with a lot because I kind of talk to, hang out with, and associate with everybody. So I'm, I've gotten pulled aside. Cops in this town still don't know what I'm up to. Um, uh, and it's just funny, you know, because they, they 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 used to pull me, try to pull me over, and uh, just like, right, this guy, this guy, they like throw and see what you stick, and it's just poker face. Not, I don't know what you're talking about, man. Can I go to the liquor store now? I need to get some cigarettes. Nowadays it's weird though, because they used to like, <coughs> anybody that was sleeping on one of the main streets, if you were up on like Pierview, you're up on Coast Highway, if you're up on fucking Cleveland or anywhere in this general downtown area, between the pier and say like Coast Highway, um, you know, you fucking you get the fuck out of here, get up, get to sleep there, it was gnarly. Um, you know, I remember, man, first being homeless, like that was, a lot of your nights kind of blur together because every night it's you get woken up and it's oh it's flashlights. 
Um, all right, let's end it. Say something nice to all the peoples because we're about to die with our battery right. again. Well, folks, follow Maddie Wanders and all your social medias and all that. And, um, you know, remember, punk rock's not dead. It's just not it out in the bathroom with a ring in its arm. <laughs> hey, man, I appreciate you hanging out, dude, and chatting. You know, I know it's random to sit here with weirdos and just fucking talking to a camera for uh, about 28 minutes. <laughs> but uh, I do appreciate it, man. Hey, um, man. You, you know, got a good perspective and, uh, you know, kind of let some folks in on a side of Oceanside that most folks won't really venture out. You know, when people come to Oceanside, they don't go into the valley. They don't go to South Oceanside. They come here, you know, and they think that's what this whole city is. Yeah. It's, it's not. Yeah. So. I'd, I'd, love, I'd love to give a tourist a little run through of South Oceanside. You like little walking tours for like $5 or something. I've, I've honestly thought of that. So. <laughs> you know, talk about the missions and, you know, some of that history. And make it, you know, like, yeah, dude. I literally, it would all just be about gang and drugs in this city. There's a mission and, over there, and, but like, if you want drugs, and, you know. I literally, like, and this is, and this is where Little Puppet got stabbed in 1998. <laughs> All right, man, I do appreciate it. Y'all yeah. say bye to Mouse, and uh, we're gonna catch up with him. I'll, I'll be back in August, probably, man, so. Yeah, I'll be around. We're, we're gonna come back down here, man, and uh, we'll do an update or something. Yeah. So, all right, guys, that's us from the Oceanside Pier, Maddie and Mouse. Y'all have a good night. Motherfuckers like me